who might be joining later okay live video here we are starting live well video why should we well find video i've clicked on live video on 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 facebook live it's i guess it's going live but in any case well brethren greetings we are having uh, we're having i would say very excited <laughs> exciting times because uh, this past week we composed the uh, fundamental beliefs of the of the hope of israel worldwide church of god other than that we also have composed several very succinct but very useful and practical papers including one on agriculture which caused quite an interest among the in the continent where agriculture is still the predominant uh, uh, predominant economy and that continent would be africa we've been contacted from all over the world uh, we have people interested in our beliefs of course we have got groups various groups of people particularly in africa studying what we what we send there was particularly particularly exciting response from rwanda and uh, other than that uh, we also are striving again to read and write even more things we uh, last night i, I reviewed the um, our paper on witchcraft in which we will in the strongest possible terms we want to basically condemn witchcraft and occultism and we're not going to be mincing words when it comes to uh life saving and when it comes to the uh, uh saving truth for humanity we're not going to be missing we're especially not on witchcraft especially not on all the harmful things in our agriculture for example paper we told people among other things about the ethical treatment of animals we told which is very important because in many parts of the world uh, animals are not treated you know treated normally or not treated as live live nefeshes which is live souls they're just treated like you know so uh, force for exploitation and if an animal is not useful for food or something like cats for example then you know they're just entitled to be abused persecuted uh, 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 exterminated and so on and so forth which is all of course the wrong ways of this of this horrible world in which we live which is thankfully coming to an end and we are being witnesses to that and i guess we will be even more witnesses to that once the beast prophesied beast power is going to rise because that will be the main persecuting force of everything and anything that is uh, of god meaning people of god meaning the mind of god meaning the doctrines of god meaning the practice and the way of life so um, i also began i also composed uh, uh, well it was a booklet on the truth about israel and of course as you know we in our name and in our approach we do we do certainly uh, put forth the most important doctrine that we have in the bible that you have to understand if you want to understand the rest of the book or if you want to put the book into context so uh, is the truth about israel the truth about the house of israel mr armstrong used to have some bible studies in the past and uh, uh, of course, some of those data which he brought out were obsolete, but uh, uh, the basic truth, the core truth, the substantial truth about the identity of Israelite tribes is there. So what I did, I just rearranged it a little bit, and here we have we now have a booklet on the House of Israel. I'll send it to our treasurer, so uh, one day it's hopefully going to be in pdf and is going to be another mighty witness to the world i'm planning to do the same i already have had for a long time uh, a manuscript on the house of israel uh, and the identity of israel in serbian and i hope to hopefully work on that in the coming weeks so perhaps you'll you'll have it soon i also have to work on the um, on constantine the great i still have a few details to add there and uh, then hopefully I'll be translating it into English and then we can have it translated into other languages. So uh, we're working, we're working around the clock, as somebody said once. We're working around the clock to preach the good news and to announce to the people, uh, to announce to the people for witness all the basic at least truth that, 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 that are there to change their lives and bring them into harmony with the eternal. Now, uh, that's all beautiful, of course. But the work of God does not uh, involve only preaching of the gospel. The work of God involves also working and allowing God to work in us, to create in us holy, righteous, and perfect characters so that we can be able and entitled to, uh, to, uh, to inherit the kingdom of God. So therefore, my question basically for you today, 
uh, it's a topic that perhaps we have not addressed for quite some time. It might be something that is not on our minds all the time. Uh, it might be something that, you know, we just don't think about that, that, that often, especially in light of the fact that, uh, in light of the fact that we have to make the ends meet, we are living in a very troubling, troublesome world. You know, we are living in a world full of conflict. And right now we do have the major conflicts. One is in Europe, as you know, and the latest news is that uh, Germany and the uh, United States administration are seeing they seem to come to agreement to work and to try to convince the uh, ukrainian president uh, to enter into negotiations with russia it seems that the west has finally come to its senses in a sense that i have been always witnessing to you you always ask me what are things happening in the ukrainian front and uh, i told you always brother in one one single truth which is so clear to some of us at least and is clear to me as well the truth is that you cannot conquer russians you know you cannot conquer russians for many reasons you know many reasons one of the reasons is that it's a nation that does not accept uh, to be that simply does not accept to be conquered it's a nation which uh, will not be conquered. It's a nation that that simply uh, whose uh, you know uh, mindset is is no, we will not we will not be conquered. And therefore, that is why uh, I told you in the from the very off off start of this all of this conflict that Russians will not be conquered and they will achieve what they have to achieve. And after all, they started this conflict because of the persecution of the Russian speaking people who lived in Ukraine. That's the fact. And even the Ukrainian regime cannot deny that. That's how the Russians started the war, because Ukrainians wanted to actually, to actually get rid of all the ethnic Russians, and that's that was a devious plan, which the Russian Russian, of course, intelligence learned about, and that they said, well, no, you will not going to see that, and that's why, as you remember, the whole conflict started with. Donetsk and Lugansk were the two areas heavily populated by the Russians. But yes, Russians are also in other all these other parts of the Ukraine that have been taken by the war. So the first, speaking of the hard times, so the first it seems that the uh, Germany and, and 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 United States have come finally to a realization: no, we cannot conquer Russians. This is going to cost even more. So why don't we just force the Ukrainian Ukrainian president for you know to enter into negotiations? Most likely, Ukraine is going to lose those territories populated by the Russians, and because Russians will not give it up anymore. And the second conflict we are seeing right now is a conflict in the Middle East. Uh, that one, well, there is a hope now around the world, as you can see, that this exchange of hostages may just finally lead to a final solution of that war. Perhaps, perhaps it will. For this time, brethren, Iran, uh, the biggest probably enemy of the state of Israel, has not got involved, which means that uh, that we will we may not see uh, escalation of this war. Which might lead us into uh, into some final stages of this world and uh, to famous peace deal in Daniel, but um, uh, it doesn't matter. This 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 horrible war has obviously deepened the differences and the uh, animosity between the Jews and the Muslims, and has certainly divided the world. As one of the consequences, as you can see, there is a forty. 400% increase in anti-Semitic Semitic incidents and attacks all over the world, especially in the United States. Uh, so those are the world. That's the world in which we live, brethren. Uh, sometimes I think in January, uh, my book Genocide Revealed about the uh, horrible genocide committed by the Hungarian occupiers in the north part of, of Serbia should come out in English, and uh, my publisher does believe that it's the right time for this book to come out because for at least one single reason is going to remind people how deprived humanity can be and uh, how 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 horrible things might happen when uh, humanity has no conscience and when humanity uh, simply just you know goes for certain ideology and so on so the book will be very succinct as well uh, it's very i think very useful and our members will see something educational. I believe that God, God obviously had me, had its His hand in uh, uh, in revealing all those various things to me, 
because that's why the book is called Genocide Revealed. It's a genocide of which the whole world has never heard. And it's committed by one of the worst criminals, war criminals in history of the world, who, found, who somehow got away uh, uh, with you know, what he has done, what he had done, and he got away with it. And then, you know, you cannot, brethren, for all the Holocaust and horribles in Europe, you cannot blame only the Germany and the Germans, because Germany, yes, could have never achieved so much carnages and, 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 and bloodbath and, 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 and horrors un, unless Germans were helped by uh, other European nations. That's why Europe has been always designated as the beast, brethren. I told you many times, many of you who live in the West, in Australia, in New Zealand, in the New World, in America, many of your ancestors fled from Europe because they fled the Catholic persecution, brethren. Europe has always been dominated by superstitious Catholic 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 Church. Europe has always been dominated by all kinds of horrible ideologies, which the worst was in the last century when Hitler was there. And interestingly enough, I remember the other day that um, it was uh, 1933 when, when God began working with Herbert Armstrong and starting the Philadelphia era. In 1933, Brendan Hitler rose to power in Germany. Interesting enough. And here we are now, uh, you know, decades after successors of the old worldwide church of God. And here we are waiting for what? Waiting for the rise of the European Hitler-like dictator. So the history is going to repeat itself, no wonder. And uh, my book, even though it's secular, uh, my book is there to, to, to testify about it. And some people, some of my friends and acquaintances are getting very excited about it because they said that the work, book is worth worthy of reading. And uh, uh, I believe also that church members, at least from the Hope of Israel, will find it very, very useful. Well, with all of through all of these troubling times in which we all live, uh, the question is still, what will each member, church member duty be in the kingdom of God? Well, have you ever thought, brethren, uh, about what your job will be in the kingdom and what Christ will have you do in the millennium and how you qualify for that responsibility? Many people don't seem to think about it. You know, uh, as I said many times, uh, to many people, just switching from Sunday to Sabbath, it's like, oh, wow, wonderful. I'm holding, I'm now keeping the Lord's day of rest, Christian rest. Yes, indeed, you are. Or, oh, I'm no longer eating this unclean food. Yes, that's all true, brethren. The, keeping God's law, it is integral part of Christian life. But there is something more to it. The more to it, it's called character. We must never we must never forget about the character, brethren, because the character is key and crucial for our salvation. Because salvation, it is a gift from God, that's for true, it's absolutely free, but you can lose it, you see. You can lose it because it's given free, and since it's something that we can lose, then God must have set terms or conditions upon which he grants that salvation, you see. So it's time for us to finally, if we haven't in the past, that we finally understand what those terms of con or conditions are. Well, first, if you will notice how one may lose salvation, why some are thrust out of the kingdom of God while others are saved. Well, Jesus Christ in Matthew 25, he said of those who perish in Matthew 25, verse 30, Cast ye the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, the question that is very relevant to this is what made this man unprofitable? You know, why did Christ refuse him admission into the kingdom of God? Where did he fail, you know? Well, that's a question we should be all asking ourselves, you know, as we examine ourselves before the Passover, which is coming up in several, in, in several well, several months. Uh, I'm thinking now, I, I'm laughing because I'm thinking in about two months I'll be 53, so I'm not, I'm not in, the, uh, in the, the, the blossoming youth youth age anymore. Uh, and yes, I feel that I'm getting old a little bit and uh, sometimes, you know, I'm not as, as dynamic as I used to be. I'm not as quick as I used to be sometimes. And, and, and the worst is when my mind simply collapses and then I cannot remember the name of certain person, the name of certain uh, noun, the name of something. And the worst for those of us who speak several languages or 
uh, or are exposed to daily use of English language, the, the, the worst part, and it's not only my, my phenomenon, is when we can remember a certain word in English, but we cannot remember it in our native tongues. <laughs> that happens. Happens to some people who are daily using English, whether because they just work for the for the Western companies or because they're just communicating with uh, with friends daily in English language, or they're just watching in in these days and age with 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 cable TV and stuff. They just watch stuff in English rather than in their native tongue. So, so anyway, what made this man in Matthew 25 unprofitable servant? Well, the answer is found in verse 21 and in verse 23 because to those who are to receive salvation those who will inherit the kingdom of god jesus christ says as you see well done you good and faithful servant you have been faithful over a few things i'll make you ruler over many things enter you into the joy of thy lord well brethren do you grasp do you see the difference you see the unprofitable servant was not faithful in carrying out the few responsibilities the few duties given to him in this life he had not learned to master his time he had not learned to master his human nature he had not learned to rule well his family obviously or to rule his children or her children if it's a woman he hadn't, you know, improved his mind, or he had, or, or or he he didn't put his income to work, even though he knew better. And he could just all that he could say to his lord was, you know, I knew you that you are a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not har uh, strawed. And I was afraid and went into and went and hid my talent in the earth. Lo, there, there thou has that is yours. That's in verse 24 and verse 25. Uh, if you notice all of that, of course, all of those are lies. That Christ, you know, uh, that Christ is a hard man. You know, doesn't he say that his burden is easy? And uh, then, you know, that he has not, he is uh, uh, reaping where he has not sown and gathering where he has not, where he has not harvested or where he has not strawed, as it says in this old King James. Well, you know, it's all lies. If you notice, brethren, lies. But of course, the slothful or lazy people will always find wonderful excuses not to get, uh, not to put their resources to work or not to see. I've seen that sadly recently, even in 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 in, in my in my in my surroundings, slothful people will just find various excuses, and that's what it is. So this man buried his talent. He was careless about life's responsibilities. He didn't call upon God for the help he needed. And he lacked faith because, you know, it says in the Bible that we are to live by, not by, by sight, but by faith, and which, is not, which is not always very easy, especially, again, when you live in these terrible, terrible times that we are living in. And sometimes when you think about our ancestors, you know, I, I at least tend to think that sometimes uh, I tend to think that they had easier easier life. But friends, uh, uh, life has never been so easy anyway. How can a life be easy in a deceived and present evil world as the apostle paul puts it you know life has never has never been easy really we just have a different forms of of, of 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 hardships but yes at least in the past as far as i remember living in former yugoslavia uh, life seemed to be more settled life seemed to be more certain life seemed life seemed to be well life seemed to be more peaceful the police seems seem to be more effective in catching criminals even without mobile phones and everything everything of course from the past always seems <laughs> seems better and nicer but in any case yes we all notice that this whole world is just spiraling down uh, more morality is just the, 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 the horrendous things and the great and, and the universal sin of all the nations you notice if you notice all that you notice it is coming to a sexual sphere you know it's just it's just a total degeneracy that humanity is entering and of course no wonder because the apostle paul says it will be like in the days of noah uh and when well Noah, think about it think about it for a minute just he was noah 120 years building the ark ha <laughs> ha you know there was never rain building the ark in the middle east you know where where, where, where the, the, the rain is even more scarce than in other parts of the world. He was the man building the ark, you know, in a pretty dry area. You can just imagine the, uh, you can just imagine what an attraction, what a tourist attraction that was. 
he was this ha 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 this this silly man building in the ark you can just imagine the uh, ridicule that he was exposed to you can just imagine the the comments of the people you can just imagine the societal pressure you can imagine all of that brethren and yet faithful noah kept building the ark and when the ark was built it saved the only eight souls that it saved he saved himself and his family and the rest of humanity drowned you might say they drowned in their sins yes indeed exactly so um, this man obviously i don't know what was wrong with this man he just buried his talent because obviously he didn't didn't deem it worthy or 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 what was the what was on his mind i don't know but he was you know he simply uh, was not going or willing to put his talents to work which is tragic uh, he was not willing to live by faith which is tragic even more he was willing to, he was uh, not willing to live by faith he was just living by sight perhaps he lived in a turmoil time troubled world but regardless of all of that brethren i mean isn't God of Israel, shouldn't he be our highest priority? Shouldn't pleasing God of Israel, which brings salvation, which brings so many blessings, shouldn't that be our priority? You know, in, in, in Deuteronomy 28, when God, 27 and 28, when he compares the two ways of life, the way, as Mr. Armstrong would put, the way of give and the way of get, you know, the end at the end of all all of that god says but please he pleads with the house of israel and by extension with all humanity please please choose life that both you and your descendants may live that's what he says you know and uh, and he pleads but anyway uh who is who is going to hear it that's a totally different different story the same with us here brethren it seems that over the past few decades, too many members in God's church were like the unprofitable servant. And perhaps that's why what happened to us after the demise of the old Worldwide Church of God in 1995, perhaps that's the consequence. Because many people don't think that an awful fate awaits for them unless they wake up. And this is also the reminder to all of us, brethren. Because many people were failing and perhaps are failing. One condition Jesus Christ set for every church member and that condition was to him that overcomes. Now, but what does it mean to overcome? Well, if you look at your Western dictionaries, and I forgive me that I say Western dictionaries, because you need to realize one thing, brethren, those of you who are living in the, especially in the Anglo-Saxon world, you have to realize how actually blessed you are, even when it comes to publications, books, uh, uh, handbooks, uh, studies, uh, and people who are not necessarily part of the Church of God, but who have put their whole lives in, studying the word of god because it was important to them that's how you have your concordances in your handbooks and stuff uh, uh hand uh, that's right handbooks yes the uh and encyclopedias and, and and dictionaries and stuff brethren that's not the case with other nations do you think that nation of uganda for example has got uh, concordance strong concordance no it doesn't do you think that they have encyclopedia of you know of, of of bible 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 words no they don't do you think they have studies do you have kenya do you think serbia do you think russia do you think you name it estonia latvia that they have uh, that they have uh, 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 you know uh, handbooks on 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 bible history no brethren they don't you, that's why i'm just saying forgive me it's not uh, it's not an, an insult but i'm just saying the, the, your, your dictionaries in the west your famous uh, Webster's Dictionary. Well, not many people have Webster's Dictionary. <laughs> Nations of Africa, I don't know what kind of dictionaries they might have or not have, but in any case, you know, when we use, even when we study the Bible here in Serbia or anywhere else, we have to use the English, English written sources because that's all that we have. A couple of, we, uh, a couple of years ago, the first ever book on the Christian on the Christian Passover. The first ever book written in this nation of mine was my book on the you know Passover in the New Testament. I think I would be able to write one 
one short short one in in English as well. So now that we have started our literature production, perhaps uh, I think I have enough articles I can put together. But brethren, uh, the, the 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 amount of blessing that the Western world has, the world that descends from directly from Israel, from Israel, it's not it's not to be underestimated. You know. But it's not given to you it cannot be given you know many of you in the west think it's given you may think that the whole world enjoys the same things that you have and that's why i had many problems with westerners trying to explain to them that the world is not like canada united states great britain and so on they're not things that you have there like things that you're all used to like part-time jobs well to you it's a given but not in many parts of the world it's given Freedom to keep the Sabbath, of course, you still have freedom, religious freedoms to high levels. Of course, there are religious freedoms in all the nations, you know, but it's all just a facade, brethren. Just a facade. Because it's supposedly religious freedom for the for the main religions like Muslims, you know, like, I don't know, Hindus, like this, that and the other. But, you know, religious freedom to keep the Sabbath, keep God's holidays. No, it doesn't exist all around the world. This week I've got I've got a request for a request for anointed cloth from a place that you would not even dream of. The place is called Pakistan. Now Pakistan, because there is a group of Christians there, various Christians, even Christians who read the Bible, so we might call them we, we read the Bible and practice the Bible, so we might call them brethren. But the man, the 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 the, the, uh, the leader, you might say, of that group was attacked recently. And they broke his leg. But you see, he remembered in his faith that it says, you know, anointed cloth in James. And then, so he wrote, wrote to ask and, and, and request anointed cloth. And if you think your life is tough in the West, you should just consider some parts of the world where Christians, even nominal Christians, let alone Bible-based Christians, are persecuted, like Pakistan, like Nigeria, like you name it. In Africa, what they do, they just, you know, the, 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 the Islamic, Islamic, well, terrorists, they go into the Christian villages, they abduct the children, and then they ask huge ransom for to release them. Or they kill all the males so that the, so that the women would remain widows, because being a widow... As you know, even in the old in the New Testament, we have a story about a widow that was persistent, persistently go to that judge. So uh, you know, being a widow even in the old times was not easy, and it's not easy in our societies today. <laughs> and the, of all the people on the face of the earth, our governments may not understand it, but you see, the Islamic terrorists do understand it. So that what they do, they inflict, they inflict such you know such, uh, they inflict such suffering. On the people by you know on on women by making them we widows you know and, and things like that the incredible world in which we live. So back to overcoming what to overcome you know that word in the Bible may not be available in dictionaries in other languages in other word in other you know in other languages in other countries but yes it is in your English in your English language so the dictionary defines. Overcome as to master, prevail over, surmount, overwhelm, be victorious over, to win, to get the better off, to conquer. And the question for all of us is how many of us are mastering our jobs, our children, our human nature with God's help? Brethren, are you surmounting obstacles? Are you gaining the victory over bad habits? Are you conquering your weaknesses? In short, are you overcoming like Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel, and who is the father of all of us? Israel means in Hebrew, prevailer with God or ruler with God. You know. And do you know what Jacob will be doing in the kingdom of God? And after all the Philadelphian era of God's church, of which we are successors, what that era will be doing? And if you want to bring it out to a personal level, what your personal individual responsibility will be? Well, brethren, every one of us will be ruling under Christ if we have first in this life, here and now, surrendered our wills to him and have let him rule in and through us. So rulership is a given. It's promised and there is nothing you can do about it. That's why God is calling the 
first fruits of salvation. But nevertheless, no one will be there who has not come under Christ's authority or who has not learned to rule with Christ in the little duties and jobs that we have in this life. Now, of course, there will be different degrees of authority because uh, just as uh, we do not all exercise the same kind of authority now, the same kind of rule now, also that there will be different kinds of responsibility in the kingdom of God. Not all will have the same office. Not all will face the same duties. And after all, as you know, not all of us have the same have the same job. You know, even today. You see, the fact that we 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 have uh, we have somebody who works for the government, Malavian government, who is the Romagas. Perhaps that man is being called. We don't really know, but he has been doing great service to God's people. You know, his office is obviously preparing him for the kingdom of God if he will to inherit, if he is to inherit the eternal life. If we take our friend Terry Nelson, you know, who will be traveling again to Malawi because he is now to have audience with the president and so on. Well, obviously, he's being prepared for something in the future. Take a look at the uh, most recent happening in, in, in Africa when all of a sudden we have several requests uh, important requests even from several countries that our John Ovak is to uh, see those leaders and people and discuss with them uh, various things you know John Ovak is he prepared for something of course he is in the kingdom to come we have to re restore the truth and the uh, and God's rule over Africa as well and so on and so forth anyway, brethren. But uh, not all will have the same office. Not all will face the same duties. That's that's what it is. But God is calling us because everybody is important and everybody is relevant and everyone is needed. Because after all, the Philadelphia near church era uh, has been used. I say, I'm saying has been used because we're a continuation, thankfully and, and, and hopefully, of it. It has been used to restore the truth and the pattern of of God's government, after all. And if you notice in the book of Revelation, at the end of each of the seven stages in the history of God's church, there is a definite promise, promise for the church, which carries on God's work during that particular period, you know. And you find those promises in Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3 and chapter 2, verse 7, verse 10, verse 11, 17, 26 to 28, in chapter 3, in verse 4, and in verse 5, in verse 12, and verse 21. To each church epoch, you know, to church, church, each church era, you have different promises that are granted. Some churches are promised a special duty, indeed. Indeed, that's the case with the church of Philadelphia. And many people have noticed, oh, but there is no um, uh, correcting words that Christ is not used for the church of Philadelphia, and for the church of Smyrna, well, he may not, but it doesn't mean it doesn't mean that those churches will not face challenges. You know, right now I'm 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 reminded these days that through many tribulations and trials we are to enter into the kingdom of God. You know, perhaps this chaotic world, this chaotic situation in which we live, to have basically two two you know conflicts that affect us. Both conflicts affect us, you know. Those of us who live, well, those of you who don't live in Europe, this war with Ukraine and, and Russia afflict us all. The prices of gas, the prices of everything else in us have, have, have jumped, have skyrocketed. And because both countries are exporters of, of wheat and grain, there is fear that because of their conflict, uh, African nations will not have enough grain, which will cause inevitably will cause starvation and, and, and hunger. Conflict in the Middle East has always been the focal point and, and fear of all of humanity because, you know, Iran is being supported by Russia, Israel is being supported, the state of Israel, by the United States of America. You know, these, these various big and smaller powers are there. All the three religions have as their focus the city of Jerusalem. The Christians, because of Christ, who lived there and died there, you know, Muslims consider it uh, a one of their holy sites. The Jews consider Jerusalem to be the uh, eternal capital of their nation. And thus, any and every uh, conflict in the Middle East has traditionally, at least in the last century, has traditionally caused great concern 
in all world populations. And the fear always would cause fear that there would be a, a, a world conflict that would just break out and consume the whole world. Now, in this current conflict, this will probably not happen, as far as we can see. But we still don't know, because the uh, peace, there will never be peace in the Middle East, brethren. And the United Nations have once again shown how ineffective and, and, and totally useless they are in various ways. If I'm to if I'm to take you if I'm to take the example of former Yugoslavia, the country in which I was born, and how that country just disappeared and, and all the all the injustices done to that country with a violation of international law and if I would take even Serbia today and how the international law on integrity and sovereignty is, is, is completely trodden and, 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 and violated by the United Nations members. That's only one example. If you take a look at all the uh, all of these uh, resolutions that United Nations have brought in the last I don't know how many years, all of those resolutions are basically anti-Israel, anti-Jewish. It's, it's horrendous. As if, you know, the Jews are blamed for all the ills of the Middle East. That's not true. But, you know, the, the, the United Nations, as well as the world politicians, usually need to find a culprit. And then the one whom they label a culprit, oh, oh woe to that person, you know. You know, in the war with, with in Ukraine, of course, Russians have been labeled as main culprits and, 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 and evil and stuff. Nobody thinks about what ethnic Russians have suffered in that very Ukraine. Nobody remembers the forceful... Uh, a change of power that happened famous Maidan in Ukraine when when the, the, the power was 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 forcefully changed it's amazing you know brethren it's it's amazing uh, again this 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 conflict again again in in middle in the middle east has any conflict in the middle east and it's always inevitable among the jew between the jews and the, the arabs any conflict will always be the the, the, the cause for great concern but what I told you from the beginning, yeah, let's see, if Iran gets really directly involved and directly has a standoff with Israel, then we are to be prepared. We are to be prepared because then possibly we can see the European envoy coming and then, you know, the envoy is going to bring the famous peace deal of Daniel, Daniel chapter 9, and then after the peace deal, we know that one becomes the president of the European Union. But when you think about the European Union, European Union even at this time is not perhaps yet ready to be that kind of that kind of boastful and, 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 and ferocious beast as it is described in the book of Daniel. You know, because European army is now in the making stages and it's coming, it's getting there, it's coming, it's slowly but surely. And also, don't be surprised because uh, there have been uh, there have been rumors now that the uh, permanent members of the United Nations Security Council uh, may 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 expand. Right now, there is uh, was it Russia, China, uh, United States, and uh, oh, I'm missing whom am I missing? I'm missing somebody anyway. But you know, there have been talks that it's not enough; they need to expand. If they extend. Don't be surprised if Germany becomes, <laughs> Germany is on rise. For those of you who are unaware, Germany has been on rise for quite some time. And Mr. Armstrong, even, even at the beginning of the Philadelphia era, Mr. Armstrong was already, it was at the time when Hitler rose to power, so Mr. Armstrong was well aware, and he constantly kept reminding the Anglo-Saxon world about the need to repent, or if they do not repent, that there will be a horrible national punishment prophesied in the Bible. And we continue with the same warning, brethren. We continue with the same warning, and because the warning has remained the same, Ezekiel's message is still as actual as ever. But through all of these hardships, through all of these things, we are to endure, brethren, and we are to be living by faith, and we are to allow God to bring and, and, and cause in us perfect righteous character we are in this epoch you know uh, we are obviously in the Laodicean epoch of the God's church but yes in the last when you look at the seven messages that Christ sends we know that in the last days before the tribulation there'll be there'll be four 
church eras or at least remnants of church eras in existence one is the Thyatira and God says unless you change your ways I'm going to throw you into the great tribulation second is Sardis dying slowly you know decaying in 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 giving up on God's doctrines you know the most one that they've never accepted the identity of Israel as truth they've never preached it they've never accepted the God's holidays now when it comes to the holidays they're playing a little bit already with a pagan horrible detestable holidays that God hates they're playing now we're trying to convince people that oh well the world the world celebrates resurrection of Jesus Christ from death to life so what's wrong with that oh the world also you know celebrates the birth of of the Messiah well what's wrong with that well many things are wrong with that at least when it comes to God of Israel not to mention the birthdays even the Catholic encyclopedia says are the habits or the, the the customs of pagans that have always been customs of pagans not of saints so even the Catholic encyclopedia knows that but we have Sardis as the second era the third era will be Philadelphian remnant because at the beginning at the start of tribulation just before the start that era is supposed to flee you could just imagine what what kind of worldwide worldwide shock shocking event that would be a group of people you know fleeing to the place of safety fleeing from the persecuting mighty revered and worshipped you know army of the beast and the third and the fourth era the dominant era now is the Laodicean era sadly we see it's fragmented it's 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 People are fragmenting because of the vanity, because of the personal vanity, and because of lack of humility, brethren, of various leaders who have just who have just fragmented the, the, the body of Christ. We do not want to participate in that, as you know. A hope of Israel will going is going to be the part of the resolution, not the part of the problem. We want to serve all of God's people, no matter where they are. We want to encourage them to be zealous for the work of God and to overcome. Because the work of God is not only spreading the good news, it is part of that, but brethren, the work of God is to allowing holy, righteous, perfect character to be built in us. Keep that in mind. Because all who overcome are to inherit kingdom, the kingdom of God, and they will constitute the kingdom, but they will not occupy the same position, of course, in the kingdom. And Jesus Christ does not occupy the same position as the Father. Yet both of them are... God family, they have eternally constituted the kingdom of God, you see. Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and verse 2, we read that the saints shall judge the world. Well, brethren, the saints will, but obviously, in this period of qualification, some will be qualified to judge greater matters than others. In Revelation 5.10, it says that we shall reign on the earth. Uh, in eternal truth that we have always known we shall reign on the earth but we shall not all reign over the same territory or over the same people of course that's why god is calling diverse people you know into his work today but not only to be spreading the good news and just be different because they keep the sabbath and god's holiness brethren if that's not the point that we be different that's not the main point it's one of the points but the main point is that we have to be in character different I would much rather that we all be described as the what Malavian government described us in the, uh, you know, before registering us. You are true Christians. I would much rather be described like where, like then. Oh, you're Sabbath keepers. We are Sabbath keepers because we return love to God, not because we will be saved by it. We return. We are Sabbath keepers not because we just enjoy to be so much different from the rest of the world. We enjoy it because it's God's. It's God's pleasure. But brethren, if people see us as true Christians, as people who are honest, people who are with integrity, people who will not lie, who will not steal, people who have steadfast character, if you want, that's, I would much rather be described that way by the people. I would much rather be perceived by other people in that way than, oh, those people keep the holiday. They, they, those people hey, keep strange holidays. Oh, those people keep the Sabbath. Why, why is that? Of course we keep the Sabbath. It was at the creation given, given Christian day of rest. Even given, even it was given to all humanity. But brethren, Sabbath is a sign between us and God, not between us and the world, or not between the world and God. Between us and God, it has nothing to do with the world. The world needs to see in us Jesus Christ. You know, oh, 
Indeed, because we're Christians, because we imitate the way of life, the way of thinking, the way of approach of Jesus Christ, brethren. That's why. That's what people are to see in us. We shall all be priests. You know, Peter in First Peter 5, uh, chapter 2, verse 9, Peter calls us even, even now, even now, a royal priesthood. But of course, that some will minister in greater capacity than others in royal in that royal priesthood. Of course, no wonder, because it all depends on how we have overcome, brethren, how we strive against the attractions of the world and the pull of human nature. And the attractions of the world are great. Oh, I'm I'm sure. Uh, uh, I remember in your Western world, it's all the Christmas carols everywhere. You know, and, and Santa Claus is coming to town. Oh, isn't that? And then you have this, uh, and here in, in Serbia, there's a, there is a, 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 a new advertisement every night going, oh, the magic of the new year, you know. And I always thought, oh, yes, the magic, oh, indeed. The magic and the occultism and the, 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 the pagan magics of all of the new year, each new year. And then it shows all in a bunch of Santa Clauses. Oh, and the, 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 the motto is, the world always needs Santa Claus. The world certainly needs one more Santa Claus. It's never enough Santa Clauses in the world. Brethren, horrendous. When you think what that Santa Claus is, what he represents, he represents a pagan god. A pagan, horrible god anyway. But, the, you know, the attractions of the world. Now, in your Christmas, now in your Christmas sale is famous, the Western Christmas sale. What is Christmas sale in your world? It is the New Year's sale in this part of the world. You know, well, people just go crazy about things, and 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 and, and, and oh, oh, what about the Black Friday? Did you know? I'm not sure what is in your countries, but the Black Friday, Black Friday was not really. I mean, Black Friday. Who knew about that? In, uh, but you know, since recent, who knew about that in this part of the world? Nobody. Just like nobody knew about the the, the, the Halloween and all that rubbish. But you know, now with Black Friday, you know, Black Friday was, as you know, declared. Where was it? Was it last Friday? I don't know. But the Serbian market has 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 come up with an ingenious idea oh we are going to extend you the black black friday to extend the black friday till the end of november so you know we'll have we'll have sales off like 75 percent off and all of that and you think about it oh my then you think and then you think about revelation when it says to the babylonian sister revelation 18 i think yes in revelation 18 it says from the from the uh, ex excess of your merchandise you have uh, you have corrupted your ways. Excess of merchandise. That's what people are just obsessed with. Spending money, you know. Spending money on things that they may need, they may not need, you know. If people would spend money on organic food, if people would spend money on anything useful, I would be happy with that. But, you know, those are always just things that you will just use and perhaps throw away later. Clothing, you know, shoes, whatever. And uh, But the obsession with that. Black Fridays, you know, Christmas sale, New Year's sale, the magic of the New Year. You should see that. <laughs> and it's, you know, it's it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful advertisement. Don't get me wrong. That's why I'm pointing it out. You know, there then they show they show a couple in a, within a house, and then and then uh, you know there is a Christmas tree, uh, because what is Christmas tree traditionally here in this part of the world and in much in East Europe was a New Year's Eve tree anyway, because Christmas wasn't really wasn't really much much regarded, but New Year's became a big deal here and then you know and then then outside the window there is a there is a sort of animal i i don't i can't remember now what it's like a, something like raccoon a raccoon is holding something in hands and then inside the house there is a dog watching out through the window and the two of them their eyes meet and then uh, uh, the raccoon is having whatever and then all of a sudden the, the the front door opens and the door the dog runs out and then they sit under the tree and they are just having like a feast like a like a like a potluck like a, 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 like an event you know in the park like you would have what's what was the word that word uh, picnic that's right 
So they're like having picnic, you know, under the tree, the two animals, and you know, it's a magic of the new world. You know, it's it's all attractive, brethren. It's all attractive, but you know, of course, the pagan nature of all of that makes us Christians realize we are not to participate in all that horror. And that was behind my the, the other the other day. Our, our our treasurer said, "Oh, uh, do you have any idea what can we be writing? What can we still write about? And and and, and what kind of article we can write for a witness?" Well, I said, so "Why don't you start with witchcraft and occultism?" Reading all the things that these people, that people around us keep and 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 and, and celebrate as Christian holidays, are just as you know, all those things are just pagan, occult, witchcraft, horror. But you see, the problem is that what people don't understand is that practicing those things attracts demons. Practicing those things brings curse upon you, you see. You see, that's why we had to take a certain stand at the beginning. That will be now. I've not, I've reviewed some of my uh, archives yesterday. From the Well, it, it just is it, basically the beginning of February of this year. We had to take a stand against certain things and against some people who crept into the church of god unawares and we're still using their native horrible witchcraft religion under the guise of christianity brethren so much damage has been done in the city in the country of malawi because of that and we we hope of israel we have done so much to amend and so much to a, a, a rectify all those horrible things and expose all that horrible witchcraft and the curse of course it brought the curse on the one the main practitioner of the curse his intestines are coming out now he has been diagnosed with HIV with tuberculosis and God dear knows what else does he have and he's in such a bad shape that perhaps he will not he may not live much longer anyway another reason why our involvement through Terry Nelson there is very important. Yes, it's important because, you know, we are witnesses of the evil of that man. He has done so much evil to his immediate fa family members. He has done so much evil, obviously, to himself, yes, but to others. He has been <laughs> the funniest story that I heard that he was, while in police station, to be interrogated about 130 Bible. Uh, Bibles that he, he 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 sold instead of distributing it to the local congregations, local congregants. You know, uh, 130 Bibles and stuff. He was chewing roots given by his given to him by his witch doctors. The roots that were supposed to make Terry and Forster dumb so that they would not speak to the police. <coughs> but it didn't work. He later. He's crazy. He 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 he's you know his mindset. He's just all into that witchcraft. Seeking help from the witchcraft, brethren, but there is no help from the witchcraft because the God of Israel is above all of that. And the God of Israel at the same time, while, you know, while uh, uh, showing his power to the witch witchcraft in Africa, at the same time on the other part of the world, in Australia, we're seeing a great improvement with our Tanya. Because, you know, in faith, I said to her son-in-law, I said, uh, you know, just make anoint, anoint her. Yes, because we don't have still, we still don't have any, 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 any elders in, in Australia. God willing, from the next, starting next year, we will, will have one. But I said, you know, you have my blessing to you to, to anoint her and just ask her for to be healed. And it's, as soon as he did it, things have drastically improved. Tanya is a lovely lady, wonderful lady, the lady who has been through so much in her life. But a fighter, Tanya is a fighter, you know, a single mother of four and, 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 and having to weather the storms of all this horrible world. She's a fighter, yes, indeed. And you know what happened? Yes, she improved all of a sudden. But we know it's the part of the heart of Israel who shows who is our... God is your doctor, your physician. That's what he says in the what it says in the Bible. And to all those witchcraft and these evil doers, it says all the things from Egypt that affected Egypt is going to affect you. Now we see that happening in Malawi. Of course, we see that, but <laughs> some others don't see it because they just believe the lies. One of the greatest, you know, sins of all the world, and the one in particular that. 
Africa's Africa is master of is the lies, you know. Is that Shim Sham dance? African Shim Sham dance. If you don't know what it is, please Google it out. You're just going to have a blast, blast watching it and being reminded, you know, it's an African Shim Sham dance. Yes, indeed. And, you know, to the African Shim Sham dance, God has obviously, and to any other Shim Sham dance anywhere, God has prepared his own judgment. In any case, brethren, when Christ comes, and he's coming very soon, we are being exposed to the attractions of the world, and the pull of our human nature is still there. But when he comes to judge us, he will, it says in Revelation 11, verse 18, he'll give reward into small and great. Now, some of us are small or smaller than others in God's sight. Some have not yielded to the law of God as much as others. Some have not worked as hard as on uprooting the power of human nature as others. Some have not let God's law govern their lives to the same degrees as others. So in the kingdom of God, you know, or the family of God, there will be individuals of different degree. But for each individual, there will be a responsibility, a job, because everybody is needed, as I said. Not the same job, of course, for we are not called to the same office, but every office is needed, brethren. It's an entire civilization. It's a whole new world, as it says. Was it in uh, Aladdin? Aladdin, yes, in, in, in Aladdin a cartoon. It's an entire whole new world, an entire civilization. It's God's kind of civilization, but in God's way and not man's way. And that's why I was so happy that in our agriculture uh, booklet or, or article, we put ethical treatment of animals. As I've said many times, those who mistreat animals will be judged as well. Animals are part of God's creation. And as I said, we discussed some things this week. I said when it comes to Africa, indeed, two things will not be tolerated. Witchcraft in any way, shape, or form will not be tolerated. Whoever is caught doing witchcraft and pretending to be a Christian is out. Out of the church of God. But also, mistreatment of animals. Superstitions about, superstitions about cats. Superstitions about animals. Mistreatment. Abuse. Such people are evildoers equally as any evil done against any of God's creation. That will not be tolerated in the Church of God either. And you know, I'm so happy, perhaps I shouldn't say this, but I will. I'm so happy that among our membership, there is a person who, what he does, he basically finds home, new home for stray cats and so on. It's so beautiful. It's wonderful that somebody has got that kind of job in the Church of God today, brethren. Because all those cats are also part of God's creation. Incredible animals. After being an owner of several cats for several several years now, I can only see what an injustice has been done all over the world against the cats. Because especially in my nation, no, we love dogs. You know, we, we don't love cats, we love dogs. Well, what kind of a man is that? What kind of a love is that? You love dogs, but you don't love cats. Oh, really? Oh, really? God has given us animals for our relaxation, enjoyment, happiness, joy, to help us in work and all of that. And ethical treatment of animals is imperative for Christians. Imperative, yes. And I don't care what others are going to think. And yes, let me say this. I've, uh, I've, been, I've been contemplating to say this since the Feast of Tabernacles in the town where I kept the Feast of Tabernacles. Uh, all of a sudden there was a circus visiting that town and there was this big big there was this there was this car going around with the with the with the with the uh, uh, uh what's the word the with the with the loud sound oh circus in your town circus this and that and the other and i just i just thought oh no let me tell you let me be very clear to all of you christians it is inappropriate for you to go to circuses because what they treat how they treat those animals and make them do things is just inhumane and unchristian. Let me be clear about that. If you love animals, if you appreciate animals, keep them if you can. Feed them when you can. Do good to them whenever you can. But don't go to circuses. Don't pay to those people who basically 
have forced are forcing animals to do things which are not natural for animals. So is circus forbidden for Christians? Well, let me tell you, as far as hope of Israel is concerned, yes, it is. We do not approve of it. We don't want you to go to circuses and we don't want your children to enjoy and clap and be happy watching the abuse of animals. Let me be clear about that. No circuses. You love animals, keep animals. And if you adopt one, it's usually good to adopt two. If you adopt one cat, it's better to have two so they will have their own kind, by the way. If you adopt one dog, there will be place for another. If you buy a bird, there are birds all over the place. Well, why don't you just buy a bird, a parrot or whatever? And it can be free at least in your home. You can just let it out of a cage in your home and it will be happy. They're beautiful, beautiful things. What about canaries who sing so beautifully? I wish I could have some, but I've got I've got these this four legged four legged little little company here anyway. So yeah, I cannot have other animals. I'm 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 okay. Well I can have dogs, of course, and I can have other farm animals once once I get to my own farm. But I mean, brethren, if you love animals, there is way there are ways to show love to them. But not to go to circus and, and, and pay even your money, your hard-earned money to pay to watch animals, you know, doing unnatural things that they are forced to be doing. Enough of that. Let somebody say that publicly once and for all to this Church of God community worldwide. No circuses. No abuse to animals. Shame. Shame to all those who do it and God is going to judge them. But in the world to come, there will be no circuses, of course. But it will be an entire civilization, God's kind of civilization. It will take literally millions of different jobs to create civilization as it ought to be. So that's why, yes, our all part is that. That's why we have been called, brethren, so different with different talents and different, different this, that, and the other. Because we are all needed in the kingdom of God. But in order to make it, we have to have the approach of God right now. We have to have the mind of God. Because we have mind of Christ, the Apostle Paul says, yes, indeed, is the mind, is the character that is also important. Not, not only that we keep the holidays and, and, and this, that, and the other, because that those things can become rituals, and can also, I'm sad, I'm sad to see those keeping of God's law sometimes uh, make some people proud. You know, I'm so unhappy when I see these Adventists. Of all the people, oh, they're so proud. They keep the Sabbath, you know. Oh, it is so source of pride. Forget about that. What would they know about the Sabbath anyway? They don't even know from their history that it took a vision of their Ellen G. White, you know, to have a vision that they should be keeping the Sabbath. They were all Sunday keepers, brethren, before they came in touch with the Church of God in the 19th century in the United States. Do you know that? You probably don't. But it's good sometimes to know the history and the background because then you understand some things much better. Oh, the same without it. They were eating pork as well. Do you know that? Oh, they've made, but now, now the Adventists have made like, I say, 11th commandment of God. You know, the food, they call it uh, 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 food reformation. And there are useful things there. Useful things. But there's obsession with some of them. Obsession, what goes with what? You know, obsession with food. Well, God has one obsession. He said that we are to take what is given to us as a food, to take it with, 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 with gratitude. Not with pride, but with gratitude, brethren. We live in this horrible world. We need to understand how horrible it is. Part of that is circus, circus shows. And yes, I'm not ashamed to say that. And yes, I'm not ashamed to say very clearly that all those who use animals, including those circus showmen and stuff, will be judged. I mean, is it, is it, brethren, is it natural for you that elephants would do whatever, that lions would jump through the, uh, through the fire? That is, is that normal? Just ask yourself a common sense question and the Spirit of God is giving us the common sense, is giving us the sound mind. So is that natural? No. That 
It must be what? Then it must be abuse of animals. How are we supposed to be paying to watch the abusing of animals? No. Exactly. End of the story. Goodbye. End of the story. And I'm not going to be arguing with anything that is common sense. And with anything that is part of the sound mind. And yes, we'll be in the kingdom of God. We'll certainly want to have circuses and all those. We'll not be having all these hospitals and all of these, all these, all these, all these poisons that they present as drugs, as medication. You know, yeah, sure. God gave us all the medicines in the in 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 in, in you know in the nature, brethren. I, I of this week, I've been going through some of the books that I've got over the past few months. It's amazing things that you find. Celery, for example. Oh my good grief. Juice, celery juice, does miracles as a book. William Anthony, so he's not, he's not a uh, whole mount. Uh, what about mushrooms? You know, how to discern what mushrooms? I've got several books, two or three books on how to discern mushrooms that are edible or not. And mushrooms as being uh, a, 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 so, a source of, of, of vitamins and source of your health. And other things there, you know. What a pity people don't buy, don't spend their money and time reading those things brethren we are christians we're supposed to be the temple of our bodies are the temple of god and yes we should not be worshiping our bodies or or they should not become our idols but nevertheless there are topics in this modern world that are indeed worthy of our attention and perhaps some of us, or most of us, or many of us, are so miserable, unhappy, dull sometimes, or all the times dull because we do not pay attention to those topics that have to be addressed. We have started well. We started with the agriculture, lovely agriculture booklet this week, and we will continue. You wouldn't believe I found even a book here in Serbia. And it's a book published in the States. Who has it? How that book made made its way to Serbia? I don't know. It's about fasting. The benefits of fasting. Would you believe that? Not to mention lovely recipes. Not to mention lovely things you can do. To make your life happier and nicer. Not too long ago, I was giving to my friends in the West how to make spinach. <laughs> oh, spinach. You would say, what's there to be? Well, there's much there to be tell, told you about spinach and other things. What about the use of various, various, uh, 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 I'm looking for the word. Now the word has escaped me, but anyway. Seasonings, yes. What about seasonings? When you go to, when you just go to, uh, when you go to an Arab country, if you're on a flight, you have a connected flight, so you have to stay in, in say, Emirates or, or I don't know, Qatar or whatever. What a lovely food there is, you wouldn't believe. And then, you know why is it so lovely? Shall I tell you, brethren? Well, I've reason, I've, 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 I've come to conclusion because they're seasoning. They're clean meats. First of all, they don't eat unclean stuff because Islam has copied that from the Old Testament. And the second thing, you know, is seasoning is wonderful there. They just know how to make a balance there. And it's just perfect. It's just marvelous. But my question to you is, why shouldn't all our foods that we make as Christians, shouldn't, why shouldn't they be tasty as well? And why do we learn some things from those Arabs and from all these other people? Why do we learn some things that will make our life easier? You know, because when it comes to food, I'm, you know, you're just saying, uh, probably, why, are, why am I mentioning the food. Well, I mentioned the food because it's integral part of our lives. And if you wish, integral part of our health. And a healthy mind will be in a healthy body. Yes, it's time for us to start thinking about it because we have been, we've been bombarded here with everything unclean. Air is polluted, water is terribly polluted, uh, food is processed, Refined, oh, refined. And when I start, when I see the word refined, I just get, I just get all worked up because you've got refined oil, cooking oil here in Serbia, refined milk, refined this, refined bread. Do you think it's healthy, brother? No, it's not. How many? How about is there's all these additives and stuff and pesticides and stuff used in this modern world? 
horrendous things. We have to re-educate the whole world. How are we going to re-educate it unless we learn it ourselves now? You know, those things have been on my mind right for now because I'm thinking how to make a, 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 a uh, how to make an approach that is not extreme. You know, how to, how to have an approach that we do things are pleasing to God, doing His will, and yet that we do not go into extremism like various church groups and other groups go. You know, vegan tendencies, this, that, and the other, yes. That we don't become vegans, that we don't become some, you know. What is the, where is the balance, I keep thinking? What is the spiritually mature approach? I've been baffled with that, brethren, now for days. But I can tell you, there are certain things that we got used to, we just took for granted while living in this world, that we've been poisoning ourselves because we are not willing to resist this world enough. Oh, we you know. Oh, it's processed food, but it's so tasty. Of course it's tasty. Well, of course that Satan is not going to give you something that is not tasty. Satan always gives you something that is nice, sweet, pleasurable. But you know, remember the end, the Proverbs, it's like having a sand in your mouth, you see. And perhaps part of our diseases that we have had for decades, you know, in the Church of God, brethren, might be caused is might be caused by us being so lenient and being so lukewarm when it comes to resisting the, the, the all of these poisons all around us. Enough of that. God gave us bodies, God gave us health, and Christ said He came to give us life abundantly. Is it abundantly? We're fine. If it is abundantly, there must be a way we find it. Where is it that abundance? Including food as well. So how come that the French are known for, for their, their, their foods, you know? So obviously they're doing something right there. How come when people come to Serbia, they just all go berserk, you know, in a positive way about Serbian food? Because, you know, here we have been exposed to Eastern, Eastern influences, Western influences, and it just collided right here. How come the Arabs make such a tasty food? Why can't we do that? Of course we can. All we have to do is just make some efforts. Without going to extremes, but make some efforts. Learn about the seasoning. Learn about this, this, and the other. Learn about medicinal herbs. Learn about the, 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 the need for, for, for water and stuff. And teach our children not to eat processed foods as, as the highest accomplishment of the civilization and to teach them there is a better way sometimes yeah we have no choice i understand we live in a very disgusting world and i understand if you live in a city you may not have much choice but yes you have at least choice to tell yourself and your posterity there is a different way kids there is a different way, but we have been deceived, and we have been we have been so much sucked into this into the vortex of these societies of ours, brethren. Do you realize that I'm coming to realize? And what what what, what concerns me is how how uh, unwilling, shall I say, we have been to resist that. Enough of this unwillingness. Enough of this lukewarmness. Enough of this, oh circus, oh what's wrong with oh, circus? Why do you make big things about circus? I make it because God's creation is being tormented in those circuses, that's why. Oh, why do you make big things about seasoning? Well, I make it because God created those seasonings, obviously, for our benefits. And if we don't know what those benefits are, we'll be poisoned. And we'll continue to poison ourselves with processed foods. And then God knows what will be with our health. And then we'll be dying. We'll be dying in pain. And we'll be dying in, 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 in misery instead of living an abundant and healthy life. Brethren, enough of our lukewarmness about certain things. Let's put up resistance. Let's put us up resistance to all these all these things and all these trends and all these stupidities of the world around us. You know, one of the things that I'm happy that I'm part of Siberian Wellness, they've come up with a with a with a a, 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 a liquid, let's say, 
it's a washing washing up liquid washing to wash your, your your dishes but nevertheless they say if you leave your 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 vegetables and fruits in that liquid for about half an hour it will take away and destroy at least these pesticides on the surface oh i'm so happy i'm so happy and there's other means in the west certainly uh, uh, the, the same kind of liquids produce brethren we we need to turn to that we need to stop poisoning ourselves with 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 these with these uh, 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 home chemicals and all these various other things they're just meant for cleaning your home and all that stuff oh please you wouldn't believe that in the past brethren my ancestors would use ashes plain wood ashes after burning you know wood to get heated they would just use ashes for cleaning things ashes they made even soap out of ashes and your ancestors probably did the same okay we live in a different world perhaps we're not for the ashes but there must be some alternatives of course there are there are people who are just doing soaps out of goat milk and you know do this that and the other we have to look for ways to resist this disgusting world I was so happy yesterday when I heard that Rwanda response from Rwanda to our our our, our uh, uh, the booklet that 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 Randy put together about the agriculture was very positive. They just want to, and then they said that they've done other things. They've been teaching their members various trades, like making shoes, trades like 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 doing this that. Now they're currently into the agriculture, so they wanted to have. Uh, they were so happy to receive our our article because they want to make their people self sufficient. That's the attitude. That's the attitude I want to see in all of us. Self sufficient when it comes to resisting the the, the, the pesticides and poisons all over the world. Oh, some people, well, well, there's not much we can do. Well, there's no much perhaps that we can do, but there's certain things that we can do. And whatever we can do, we should do, because otherwise God is not going to intervene in our lives. We, will, we should do what we can, and God will do what we cannot. Keep that in mind. And that's with all that I'm telling you, because it's all qualification for the kingdom as well. We must stop being so slack about certain things. Concerning our lives, our safety, our health. And you know what is so happy about the kingdom of God? Your job will be what you will find the most pleasure in doing. We do not get all the same pleasures out of the same things. <laughs> of course not. And that's why God has not called us to the same office. He called different people. And notice also what... We as continuation of hopefully Philadelphia era today, what is that church promised? And this includes you, brethren, and me, if you and I continue as overcomers and if we resist temptations and end up as victors in our trials. And we all have various trials, of course. If you go to Revelation chapter 3, verse 10, Revelation 3, 10, it says, because you, well, you, well, if you, instead of you, you can say our church, you can say perhaps hope of Israel, worldwide church of God, has kept the word of mine in patience, meaning that we have patiently kept God's word in a gainsaying world. I, responds Jesus, I also will keep you from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. You see, to try those who try upon all the earth. So, brethren, if we hold fast to the end, if we don't compromise, in other words, including including circuses, including treatment, ethical treatment of animals, if we don't compromise, oh, yes, you'll be ridiculed. Oh, oh you must be part of the Society for Protection of Animals. Oh, you must be. Of course, you'll be ridiculed. Just get ready for that. It's going to get worse. And don't th stop thinking about, oh, I'll be so, oh, the world is going to look at me and ridicule me and stuff. Of course it will. It ridiculed Jesus Christ, ridiculed the apostles. It ridiculed everybody who was part. People were losing their life by being burned, beheaded, you name it. Let us stop whining about, oh, you know, we will be rejected. Of course we'll be rejected. If you were of this world, the world will have its own Jesus Christ's words that we read every Passover, don't we? But because you're not part of the world, the world hates you. Indeed, 
and let them hate us. What is important? Is our salvation more important than the world loving us? What does the Apostle Paul says? Whoever is a friend to the world is enemy of God. If you hold fast to the end, notice the reward promised to Philadelphia era in the kingdom of God. Look, look him that overcomes, and brethren, it includes ev everyone, anyone, not just the ministry, not just the those who are the leaders. No, it's because anyone, him that overcomes, will I make a pillar? What is a pillar, a main support in any building? So all of us know what is pillar, what pillar is. I'll make a pillar or, or main support in the temple of my God and he shall go out no more and I'll write upon him the name of my God, New Jerusalem. And notice what else? My new name. You certainly remember in Galatians chapter 2 verse 9, uh, the Apostle Paul writes how he could not go to Jerusalem right away. And then he said when he went to Jerusalem, he met with the pillars, with James and Peter and John, who seemed to be pillars in the early church. In other words, they were leaders. That responsibility is exactly what God promises to us in God's church today. Brethren, we are to qualify not for David's office, nor for the apostles, the office of any apostle, but we are to qualify spiritual pillars or leaders the main support in god's house symbolically called temple in revelation chapter 3 and in verse 12 we're to be main support in god's house for all eternity a pillar is the main support in a temple is the main support i would say in any 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 building we're talking about spiritual temple because this is the spiritual temple to which jesus christ is supposed to return is that temple supposed to be sitting and clapping, watching the poor elephants and, and lions and, and, and wild animals being tormented? No. No. No, brethren, we are ambassadors of Jesus Christ. That's why the college used to be called Ambassador College. Ambassadors for Jesus Christ, the Savior of all mankind, was the line of singing of the Ambassador Choir. And we better start thinking about our present time. We're ambassadors. Each our home, hopefully, will be embassy, embassy of this new world coming, different world. Will the world, this world, love us for that? Of course it will not. But if you are right now not willing, not able to withstand the ridicule of the world, then what will be the end? It's going to be even worse. What will be the end when your names show up on the headlines? Heretics. Enemies of the state, the greatest insult that you'll get. We all love our countries and we're not enemies of any of our countries, God forbid. But Brendan is going to come to that point. And especially it will be hard for you who are used and take for granted your liberties and freedoms. Liberty or death, remember. Well, no. We are for spiritual life, eternal life. We're not for death. Whether we shall have liberty or, or not in this world, we don't have it already anyway. We're all being watched. What do you think? That they're not <laughs> overseeing us. All of these intelligence services and all. Oh, please. What do you think? That the, German, that the German intelligence does not know what we preach. Do you think that the, the, the British intelligence doesn't know that? Do you think that American... Please, brethren, stop being so short-sighted. Let me not use some, some, some harder word. Of course they watch us because we have different message. We have different approach. We have different way of life. We're ambassadors for Jesus Christ. We're ambassadors of the kingdom of God. We're so different that they have to watch us because we pose the threat to their society. And perhaps to the security, you know. Because we literally believe in the fulfillment of revelation. Therefore, we might be some fanatics who may try to contribute to literal fulfillment of, trans of, of revelation by, I don't know, doing some terrorist act by, you know, blowing the world apart because the world is supposed to, 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 to disappear and the new world to come. Brethren, 
start thinking start stop being so short-sighted and start thinking from the aspects from the point of view of those people in the power those people who hold the power those people in the intelligence service those people who are different from us to them we are a threat and we are because we are ambassadors of the new world we're ambassadors of the kingdom of god but the promise we have for sticking without compromise to the truth is that we should be pillars in the temple of God for all eternity. You know, which means that it will be headquarters in Jerusalem and, you know, we will be able to judge at headquarters in Jerusalem all the various problems of the whole world. No human court could even begin to do what God promises we shall be qualified to perform, brethren. Because notice what it says in uh, promise to the Philadelphian church, he shall go out no more. In other words, we are never to be removed from that reward and that responsibility. We are to be at headquarters, setting policies, determining those decisions that need to come to headquarters. Something similar to what happened in Acts chapter 15. Remember the, 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 the apostles conference. There were some, yeah, there were people just there in, Gal in Galatia coming with Caesars trying to circumcise certain believers and telling them unless you're circumcised you cannot be saved and it became a hot burning issue so Acts chapter 15 the conference was called in Jerusalem to resolve this issue and if you go to Acts chapter 15 you'll see how well it was resolved but even more than that, brethren, the Philadelphian era is to have the name of the capital city of the universe, the headquarters of the whole world. And that's what, where, where we are to be centered. The pillars of the church ought always to be at headquarters so that all may appeal to it for decisions. And all of us being trained for this job now, brethren, even if it is only by learning you know, to pray for the work at headquarters and by sending to headquarters your tithes for the conduct of the work of this of, of this church and so on. Well, yes, headquarters. We live in a virtual world. That's another. And now with this artificial intelligence, I'm getting, I'm growing ever weary with this artificial intelligence. I'm just, I'm just, I, I just feel, I'm just afraid, brethren, of the consequences and how far that will go. Everything is virtual, yes, virtual because it's virtual. We do have, uh, we don't have really the headquarters with, with 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 stuff that we can be paying for. But we do. We are trying to make bases. The long term, our long term or longer term goal is to have a base in Europe. Yes, have a base in Europe because I still live in a country which is not part of the European coming beast. I live in a beautiful country when uh, where many celts used to live and you all know that celts are part of the lost israelites i lived in a beautiful country with beautiful nature so we want to have a base here in europe we want to have possibly base here there and everywhere but thankfully because of this virtuality of this world uh, some of the operations of the church have been easier we don't have to be paying for the headquarters we don't have to be paying bills for this that and the other we don't have to be build huge ambassador college we can use internet to make our academy if you wish we can we can use internet for so many things and save so much money anyway and we are doing that so we are not like you know oh let's use my no one of the reason why Terry Nelson is not going to come to Serbia is to save money. Instead, since I have visa for the U.S. valid until 2028, and I've got three baptism requests, and the baptism candidates are willing to pay for it, then we decided we should save some money, and I should rather go to the States, do what I have to do. Terry will perform what he has to do. He has got so many duties in Africa, and what he has done in Africa is absolute restoration of the good uh, recapture of true values if you wish that was the motto of ambassador recapture true values well Terry Nelson has been recapturing true values in Africa and leading hundreds of people there to recapture true values he has to go now even more because in the meantime there were some leaders he already met and they were asking for our beliefs and our foster our friend there has uh, distributed to them the uh uh, the, 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 the list of our fundamental beliefs that we put together this week. 
So we're trying to save money with so little resources. You may wonder, brethren, we are doing the work of God. May God be, may God of Israel be praised for that. You know, we 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 use, we have wasted not one single penny on any Protestant TV, Protestant radio, anywhere in the world, or any other radio in the world. We do have our internet radio, Hope of Israel Worldwide. <laughs> It's working day and night, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. How much does it cost us? Well, it may probably cost us just to pay for the uh, for the servers that serve us. Cost us nothing. We have produced all these several articles this week. Well, I cannot say we because that seems like I'm 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 taking taking credit for something. No, I just proofread all of that and I'm involved in that, but Randy was the one who just felt moved to do that, to produce several articles that speak about the basic beliefs of the Church of God and several articles about specific topics like agriculture. So Hope of Israel has, let's put it that way, has produced it, produced it, and has sent it as a witness to the to, to to various nations. Is that preparation for the kingdom? Yes, of course. Is that spreading the word? Yes. Is that restoring all things? Oh yes, of course. God has traditionally used Philadelphia Church era to be restoring, to be restoring various lost truths anyway including the truth about the identity of Israel. Well, I've just sent what I prepared for it, what I arranged for it, and hopefully that booklet will be out, that booklet will be out very soon. And it will go around the world as a witness again, brethren. But the point is, with little resources, by using all that God has given us, we've been doing the work of God spending at least money that we have to which is good because that helps us to help the members and 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 and, and, and go to help various members that might fall into various troubles and economic hardships and, and 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 be exposed to all kinds of things and so on i was laughing this week uh somebody somebody from one of the churches of God said, "Oh, we have the greatest, we have the greatest, more, more widespread radio presence in the world." I was like, "Oh, oh I was like, oh, you, you cone, you, 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 you silly one." Because you know, his church pays for the time slots for for the for to having having a presence on various radios and stuff. It's not true, brethren. We don't boast around the world, but we have the greatest radio presence because we're present on the internet 24 times, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Right now, as we are sitting here, our radio worldwide, you know, God, uh, the, the hope of Israel worldwide is being in function, operating, spreading the news, telling people what they should be doing, instructing them how to understand the Bible. Telling them what is the house of Israel. Telling them what each particular tribe is. Anyway. But we are all qualified with all of this. Whatever you are doing, wherever you are, brethren, we are called to be qualified for the kingdom of God. And we should hold fast to responsibility given to us. And do the very best we can. And we are doing the best we can. And it costs us virtually, virtually nothing. Except the efforts we put forth. In all those in all those endeavors and we are to be judged according to what we have brethren many who seem to be small now will become great spiritual pillars tomorrow and for all eternity and some who seem to be greater today you know may not appear to be so great tomorrow God is not respecter of persons and God will not also make make of you what you are not willing to become so please stop this 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 well, just think, who inspires you? What power inspires you to think, oh, we don't want to be kings, so oh, we are not born to be kings, so oh, we don't want to be priests, so oh, we don't want to be public, oh, we don't want this. Who cares what you want? We are to care what God wants. God has said we will be kings and priests. Period. 
And what a wonderful truth about the government of God, which lies hidden within these several small letters that Christ sent to the seven churches of Revelation. You know, what wonderful promises are open to us. We, we have undreamed of powers to remake the world and to be happy doing it. So what's wrong with that? You know, I, 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 I've, I've had problem with, problems in Serbia with some people who have been sitting here for years in the Church of God. The reason most when I said that when we're at the feast, we are future kings. And all those waiters, for example, serving us their future kings. You know, right now we have in Portugal, in Argentina, people listening to our radio, brethren. Right now we have people in Canada listening to our radio, Hope of Israel Worldwide. Good. We have been reaching the world as never before. And it costs us virtually nothing. <laughs> One day when Mr. Armstrong is in the first resurrection, and if we all make it to that first resurrection, he'll be so proud of us. We'll, be, we'll have something to even tell him. Look, you're our father in faith. Look, we have done what we have done with our talents, even after your death, while many people just didn't care. They just minded their own businesses. They just watched their own, their own you know, lives. Look what we have done with the talents that God has given us. Look. And how much money did you... Well, we didn't... Virtually nothing. <laughs> we just used the modern amenities, the modern internet, the modern technology, and we just have done the work of God in our time in a way that probably no others before us were ever able to do it. I'm sure he'll be happy. I'm sure he'll be proud of us, brethren, but... Even more so, God is to be proud of us and we're to be proud of Him. And even more so it is that we just endure in all of this work, in all of these terrible times, to make it into the kingdom and to restore the whole government of God all over the earth. And to think, you know, that God extends to, in a sense, to this church, because that's what he said to Philadelphia. We are we strive to be Philadelphia's successor. To this church as a body, the positions of pillars in his work. Just think about it. And before I close, let me just caution you that not everyone called to be an apostle was an overcomer. Because as you know, Judas departed from the faith. And sadly, what I'm seeing at least in Serbia, these days, is that some people seem to be departing from the faith because they've got some other priorities and some other ideas. So perhaps not everyone who was with us or is with us now will succeed. Perhaps I just, you know, I don't want to say it with any certainty because I hope that it will not happen in the end. But what? I cannot say there is one thing that's God's promise which stands firm. And that is that we can, if we overcome ourselves, we can all stand together as pillars in the kingdom of God, in the government of God, in the coming kingdom of God all over the world.